My name's Fran Bodkin. I'm a Tarawal woman of the Bidigal clans. My mum was Aboriginal. My dad was a mixture of Irish and Canadian Indian. Um, yeah, they made a great pair. Mum was the one who taught me a great deal of what I'd learned about our bush, about our culture and special places. We're in one now. And also my great nan. I didn't speak much to my grandma because I didn't particularly like her. Um, but my great nan was, was a, a beautiful little old lady. She was, even then she came up, just about came up to my shoulder. But she was a tiger. She was wonderful. And um, she also taught me an awful lot. Mum wrote down the stories for me, but it was Nan who explained them and the importance of the stories and what I could learn from them. And um, yeah, and she also taught me a lot about the plants and that and how they need to grow together. Um, although they both gave me plant knowledge, it was her knowledge that I'm working on at the moment. It was great Nan's knowledge that I was working on now. And, um, and it's, it's so interesting, it ties the medicines and the foods and, and the people together. This, this wonderful association. Science is made up of four parts. The white man's part, which is experimentation and measurement, and our part, which is observation and experience. And if you put the four together, you then have a continuum a growth of the, the, what would we call it, the science of knowledge. And that's what they taught me, and that's what I've been trying to teach others. <laughs> Most of my relatives died, the females died at 40, and I'd always thought I would too, mum died at 40. And I always thought that I would be the same and I thought, I better start writing everything down, <laughs> otherwise it'll be lost. Because I was single, they had no intention of ever getting married. And um, so that's when I started writing it all down. And uh, hoping that I would survive long enough to finish writing it down. Now I'm 80 odd, and I still haven't finished writing it all down. <laughs> so it's probably what's keeping me alive. <laughs> what I'm doing at the same time of, as writing this big book is I'm actually sorting out the associations at least of New South Wales because fortunately um, when National Parks was first formed the scientists there did a lot of work on going through the old notes, old explorer notes and finding out you know the associations of because they, those old botanists were wonderful they, they put down every particular, every detail. I was able to, to use them gather the information that I needed and it was it made made it so interesting and the fact that it was the associations and the associations are quite wonderful because I've also been working sort of at uni finding out how all this happens and like marrying the four, four remember the four four parts of, of science marrying the lot together because they've been walking separately through time for so long and uh, in putting them together by doing the associations, it's quite wonderful because they knew in the old days, we knew that the, um, the plants needed to be growing together to produce the medicines that we needed to heal ourselves. And um, so I thought, hmm, yeah, we're going to do this. I am going to do this. And so I put the associations together. I did some or got some of the students to do some experiments at uni. And lo and behold, <laughs> our old knowledge worked. <laughs> and, um, and what it was, if the plants are growing within their associations, then um, the, the, plants, the, the medicines that they produce are going to be stronger. So what we found is that there's a mycorrhizal fungus, which is in, within the sap of the eucalypts, and it travels around the eucalypt and then accumulates in the leaves of the eucalypts. Then 
gradually, when they reach about six months old, the leaves fall from the tree. Everybody says the, the eucalypts are evergreen. Well, they are evergreen, but they're also deciduous, but they're deciduous all year round. They don't drop their leaves, you know, just in one, which is a real annoyance when you've got a swimming pool. <laughs> but anyway, that's beside the point. The, um, with the association, the, the mycorrhizal fungus accumulates in the leaves. The leaves eventually die and fall off, fall down to the ground. There they start to decay and the mycorrhizal fungus in the first rain then goes through the soil and attaches itself to the roots of the plants growing underneath the tree. And then that enables, by attaching themselves to the root, it enables that plant to take up the nutrient that it needs to produce its medicine. And the, the more leaves, the stronger the medicine. The more eucalyptus leaves, the stronger the medicines. And uh, yeah, and that was the wonderful thing. When those plants die, the uh, nutrients that they produced then goes back into the roots of the eucalypts and is taken up and the, med the uh, eucalypt can make medicines too. See, we haven't, we've, we've been too busy studying the small bits we haven't been studying the effect of the big bits. And that's what I'm doing at present and it's so exciting. <laughs> I hope it never stops. <laughs>